Welcome back to Mills Way YouTube channel. Hope you're having a great day. Today I want to talk about surviving divorce. Is it better to stay married or get a divorce? Now, this isn't a favorite topic of mine, but I have a friend going through a divorce right now and he feels pretty devastated. You know, not only his dreams are shattered of staying married his whole life, having his kids have a mom and dad that's married, but now also he's lost friends. His friends he had from when they were married and her relatives have seemed to pull away and lost contact with him. He goes from living in a nice house to now he's living in a dive apartment down here in Arizona. At least he's in Arizona. It's sunny down here. I've had one of those divorces, or as on the golf course we call a D. I survived. Mine was 18 years ago. But it wasn't, I'm not going to say pleasant. But I learned things from it. So on our Mills Way to Financial Freedom rules, the rules that we cover with our boys, helping them maybe have a head start in life, now, of course, anything I say in these YouTube videos, on my blogs, on my podcasts, they're for education only. Be sure to seek out a professional, seek out a lawyer, accountant, financial planner, etc. But one of my magazines that I was going to give him was is really interesting because I I'm for staying married unless you know there's marital abuse, physical abuse. Uh, your spouse is create, uh, committing, let's say, felonies. You don't want to go to jail for the felonies. But this is a Time magazine, and they had an article, What Divorce Does to Kids. And now, my friend, his kids are grown up, but they could still have some effects because they're used to their mom and dad being married their whole lives. Myself, when I was a kid, I never had any friends that were divorced. Nobody was divorced in my family. I, I never knew about it. So I never even thought about it. I never thought about it ever happening to me. And I don't plan on it happening again. I plan on living with Darlene and the boys for the next 50 years. Or I hope the boys get out on their own someday and we can come visit them and their grandkids. But this article, some of the neat stats it had on there, for instance, on financial freedom as we tie in with everything I do it said that over 40 percent of first time marriages end in divorce now I've heard that it's even higher for second and third marriages if I get divorced again I'm done no no way I know people that's had three four five divorces I, I just don't see how they do it it says the average duration of marriage is ending in divorce is eight years and the second one is six years. It said, this is the one I like the best, the wealth of ages 51 to 60. For married couples, 132,200. Divorced, 33,700. And widowed, 42,300. So just right there shows it pays to stay married. A lot of other good information in here. You know, it talks about different reasons why people get divorced. Common one is one spouse cheating, thinking the grass is greener on the other side, want something new. Uh, when I helped counsel people with financial health, helped over 1,100 people with debt problems, common thing I heard through those people that did get divorced was money. Money was one of the top two or three items, if not the top reason why they got divorced. So hopefully with my Mills Way to Financial Freedom rules, I can help save some marriages, getting them back on track, getting them debt free and getting them towards their goals of financial freedom. She wrote, 
One of the authors in here wrote, children from broken families tend to marry later and yet divorce more often than those from intact homes. Something to think about there. There was studies also showing that sometimes they have a risk of doing drugs sooner, having sex sooner. Different effects. I know not every kid's the same. Also, she wrote, children don't need their parents to like each other. They don't even need them to especially be civil. They need them to stay together for better or for worse. I couldn't agree. So, if you are thinking about divorce, or it takes two to get married, but one to get divorced, so if she wants a divorce, there's nothing you can do, or he wants a divorce, you could try. You know, you can try going to a counselor, a marriage counselor, going to a church, talking to a pastor taking classes, getting a mediator. But another good thing is Gary Smalley. He has a seminar. He has a retreat. He has, there's tapes and books out there. Those are all helpful. But make sure you get your spouse to go with you. When I went through my divorce, we got a counselor. We went one time and then she said, she wasn't going to come back because it was all me that had the issues, not her. So, you need both people to be party. If she doesn't want to be a party or he and the divorce is going to be happening, you see it, get a lawyer right away. Get a, def get a lawyer to protect your rights. Another thing to do is make a copy of all your current financial statements, your debt statements, credit cards, then cut up your credit cards. Now is it the time if you're getting a divorce to go buy real estate or get a car loan. It's time to get your things in line. Make copies of income tax returns. Try to be civil with your spouse. It's a lot cheaper to be civil with your spouse than pay a divorce attorney. Divorce attorneys, I've heard, range from $250 to $800 an hour. Plus, their assistants make money. Plus, every time you call make, or, or send a fax or they answer an email, it all costs money. So why not work it out with your spouse the best you can before the lawyers get too involved? Now, when we're talking to our boys, we're talking to them about things they could do to maybe avoid a divorce or make a divorce smoother, if that's possible. One thing is getting a prenup, which is kind of like a breakup, but have a prenup with your spouse. And if they really love you, it's not going to kill the romance in the relationship. Another thing would be make copies of all your assets and debts, each of you, before you get married. So you have that current starting point. So, depending on the state you live, if you have to divide assets and debts, sometimes you can back out premarital assets out of that equation and premarital debts. So something else to think about. <laughs> to have your spouse to be go to marriage classes go to churches there's a lot of different premarital classes and in those classes normally they talk about money because money's a major thing make sure you're able to talk to the person you're gonna marry about money know what each other has for assets and debts talk about a plan for big purchases are you gonna you know, like Darlene and myself, any large purchases over a thousand dollars, we talk it out. And if we don't both agree, we don't buy it until we work it out. Talk about kids. Do you both want kids? If so, how many kids? Because two kids is a lot cheaper than five kids. 
And if you have kids, is both spouses going to keep working or is one spouse going to give up their job and stay home? Now, if you both keep working, daycare can cost a lot. I had a friend living in Chicago, and I think daycare for two kids was $2,600 a month. So you had to pay, you had to make like $4,000 a month or $48,000 a year to pay for daycare. But yet, if your spouse has a good job, you have a good job, and you give up one of those jobs, how is your budget going to work out? Are you going to stay within your financial freedom percentages or are you going to need to downsize your house, get rid of a car, downsize cars, redo your budget. You can make anything work, but these are things to talk about before you get married because sometimes they're make or break or divorce cause causing issues later in life. So it's good to work these all out before you get married. Talk about budgets, talk about cars, maybe even let them listen to my podcast, Dave Ramsey podcast, uh, Married Kids and Money podcast. Go to educational classes together. There's a lot of information out there and a lot of free information out there too. So if you do get married, let's say, and you're having married money problems, a lot of times the spouse may not want to listen to you or get tired of hearing you talk. Bring in a third party, a neutral party. Maybe go see a financial planner, a financial advisor, a financial coach like myself. Go to the church and see if they have counseling for money. It helps to have a third person, whether to work it out for both of you to be able to come to a compromise or for the other spouse to realize that you're not as crazy as you've been talking. Bottom line, we can't spend more money than we make. Once you get in that debt, it just snowballs and can get worse and worse and worse. The only way to pay off debt is to pay down the principal. You gotta live within a budget, live with it below your means. And if your expenses are too high, you need to make some hard choices, make decisions, take action, and cut your expenses down so you're within a budget where you're able to get debt free, where you're able to have an emergency fund, where you're able to save for retirement. So you have a choice if you want to retire early or not. You have choices in life. It's so much less stressful to be debt free. Have a great day. Visit millswade.com, liveforward.club. Hit like if you like this, subscribe to my channels, and support me if you do. Have a great day. Bye.